Today's guest is Anand Dakshinamurthy. He is speaking about his passion for reading and publishing and his upcoming trip to India and Sri Lanka to look for literature for publication as a part of the SALT initiative. Anand Dakshinamurthy is a Fulbright scholar graduating with a master's in publishing from New York University. His first book acquisition, a Swedish novel titled The Details, was shortlisted for the International Booker Prize 2024. Anand is also part of the SALT contingent visiting India, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh this year, scouting for literature to get published in the USA and the UK. SALT, South Asian Languages in Translation, is an initiative by the University of Chicago to bring South Asian literature to the Anglophone world. Translators Daniel Hahn, Jason Grunbaum, Arunava Sinha, Daisy Rockwell and author V.V. Ganesha Nandan are part of the team leading SALT. Welcome to Harshani Amanant. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So, how did you develop interest in literature to begin with? Okay, I was born and brought up in a small town, Trichy, in Tamil Nadu. From childhood, I've started reading pretty early with all the supplements. Usually, the newspaper supplements that come, these are Silver Mala, Silver Mani, the kid supplementary books uh, that I started reading and mostly newspapers. That's how I, my literary <laughs> journey started. Uh, uh, I was not a very avid reader initially. I only engaged with news and media in general. But I followed the traditional route of higher education, went on to do engineering. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer from bachelor's degree and went on to do a postgrad diploma in liberal arts at Ashoka University as a Young India Fellow. So this was partly due to uh, some of the elective courses I took during my final semester. And I thought I need to explore more humanities. It gave me a um, lot of exposure and there was especially two courses that stood out for me. One a critical writing course where I began to start writing. One, I became a very effective communicator, both in writing and in oral communication. Then there was another course, culture and communication, which was a sociology course, which gave me a lens on uh, caste, religion, sexuality and gender. So this kind of molded these two courses, especially molded uh, me into a very different person from who I was uh, initially. And uh, then I went on to work with print. And YF also gave me a thirst for reading. And I've been just started, I've been starting to read a lot of nonfiction. That was a phase when I was reading a lot of nonfiction coming out of Ashoka, more of public policy, economics, or history related nonfiction I was reading. I used to go to uh, Delhi Tamil Sangam's library and I used to pick some uh, some of these uh, Tamil books there. Initially, it started with Prabhanjan's short stories, collection of short story from Tamil writer Prabhanjan. Then I've explored a lot of authors, a lot of genres within Tamil, contemporary Tamil writing. And yeah, I've read J. Mohan. He's a great writer. I love his works. Like Noor Narkalikal is one of my favorite works from Aram. I've heard so much of Esra. S. Ramakrishnan is another Tamil writer, a Sahitya Academy Award winner. His videos are podcasts in those days. So YouTube videos, those were an hour or two hour long. He introduced, at least to this generation, Gogol, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, and Pushkin. So a huge introduction to Russian literature came through S. Ramakrishnan. And that's where I remember I started reading much more fiction. And again, short stories were my favorite format. It was also easy to finish and go move on to another story. But translated fiction was very recent. I think in the last two, three years, I've started reading much more translated literature. I started from literature coming out of neighboring states, Kerala especially. So I read some of the Malayalam works in Tamil first. Then I started reading in English. So M. Mukundan's works I started reading. I read N.S. Malavan's work, M.T. Vasudevanaya's work. I started reading, uh, especially a lot of Korean literature in translation. Most of Anton's work, I've read Anton Hoor. He started with Love in the Big City, Sang Yang Park's Love in the Big City, then Bora Chung's Curse Bunny. Then there is this beautiful chapbook series called Iyagi from Stranger Press, where they published eight Korean 
authors from eight Korean translators. And that's one of my favorite formats, chapbooks and Korean short stories. Then I've been reading some East Asian literature, Yumiri's Tokyo Station. I'm currently reading Confession, Martin Cohen's Confession, Danny, Daniel Hans. So this has been uh, my reading journey so far. I've, I'm trying to be as wide as possible. I uh, don't, I, I've not narrowed down my reading to a particular uh, genre, etc. Uh, I've also read part of my um, you know, current program. I've read some uh, children's books, middle grade books. also read some romance, thriller. As a publisher, aspiring publisher, I want to experience all kinds of formats and genres. So that's where I'm at uh, <laughs> in terms of reading. Your father is a reputed translator too. And uh, congratulations. Last week, uh, he won the Kendra Sahitya Academy Award for his translation. Please convey my best wishes to him. Definitely, of course. So being a mechanical engineer, jumping into liberal arts. It's a big leap. So the early influence came from him, definitely. He used to go to literary events, local literary events together, even when I was a child. And also I've seen him writing, translating, etc. But I was never so much fascinated about translation or literature at that point. I was in my own world doing things as a kid. But I think I started reading, trying to figure out what's happening in the publishing world, how a book is published, what goes around in getting a book to the market. Then I figured out there are some gaps in the industry. So essentially, again, in, in, when it comes to local Tamil publishing industry, it's still very unorganized. There is no full-time writer in Tamil. I was wondering why. So that was my first question that I asked myself. Like, why are there no full-time writers in Tamil when there are so many full-time writers in the West or in the English language, especially? It's financially not viable here because uh, the authors here don't get, are not financially remunerated properly with advances and royalties. In most cases, the current young generation of authors have a day job as an IT engineer or medical. Yeah, that struck me quite a bit. So I wanted to change, want to bring some intervention in the local industry. That is one. But also... Even the contemporary works from other languages reached Tamil very quickly. Uh, but uh, it did not happen the other way around. Uh, no Tamil works um, went to other languages uh, as, uh, as much as there were inward uh, translations. So we had European, Latin American works coming into Tamil very frequently. And Russian literature has been there all along. But Tamil never went to all these places. Tamil literature never went outside. Tamil Nadu, even within India, even within India, Tamil never went to, let's say, East India or Northeast, etc. So that's where I figured, okay, as a publisher, only I can make such intervention. And that's how the this leap into publishing industry. Yeah, so answer to answer your question, yes, initially my father didn't approve from engineering to when I even when I shifted to liberal arts. As a usual Indian parent, they said, you studied engineering, you, you had to become an engineer. What? <laughs> uh, and what are you doing? Um, yeah, I was applying to all these fellowships at that point, Teach for India and India Fellowship. I think confidence came in, I think, after my YF journey or during my YF journey. They got to know, okay, he'll figure it out. He's probably taking another route. But I think he's proud of me now and now that I'm I got this full bright and moved uh, here for the grad school at NYU and pursuing this publishing as a full-time thing now so I think yeah I think he's proud <laughs> yeah. when you were at print I believe you were into writing too My day job was a business analyst so print was is a news venture that began. In 2017, so I was part of their founding team. Shekhar Gupta, as you might know, is a, one of the senior journalists in the country. So he is the founder of the print. And when he began, he picked a bunch of us from Ashoka. So yeah, I was helping him as a business analyst working out of his office to build the print. So my work was finance operations and editorial product development. A lot of things together. But I also started writing of my, on my own interest seeing that nobody was covering Tamil Nadu at that point. That's when I started with one opinion or a column. Then I began writing some of the news reports and against short columns, 
and features, etc. So notably, I started profiling some of the Tamil authors while I was working there. So that is something I started doing, at least for the Tamil literary space, <laughs> because no nobody outside Tamil Nadu again knew uh, these names. Um, so I wanted to, uh, you know, get these names outside Tamil Nadu. So I wrote about them. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to <laughs> working with the print writing. But I also still continued writing. I was with them until the end of 2019. And then I came to work with the Higher Education Institute in Chennai. And then I worked with the government of Tamil Nadu in their in the industries department, heading their media team. But I was still contributing parallelly. I was still writing for the print here and there. It's something I love doing, writing and seeing my own byline. So yeah, that's been my writing journey. Currently, you are pursuing your master's in publishing from NYU. So, what exactly is uh, MS in publishing? So, even I didn't know there's a co- uh, course, graduate course existed on publishing. While I was looking at some of the courses I would want to pursue, there is this friend of mine, my batchmate, who had done this course. So, this course had two specializations. So one was magazine publishing and one is book publishing. So she had done magazine publishing. And that's how I got to know, okay, there is this course that existed. This was a time, again, Fulbright scholarship. So this is an exchange scholarship between India and the US. So Fulbright Masters, Fulbright Nehru Masters Fellowship, it's called. They reintroduced a category called journalism and mass communication in 2022, while 2021 while I was applying. So I thought, okay, this is a... Right time, okay, let's just give it a chance and apply under this category uh, for the publishing program. And uh, that's how it happened. Uh, And I got through this uh, program. So the program is essentially uh, a holistic view of the publishing, uh, book publishing uh, in different formats. So we study from the basics of uh, book publishing, how to acquire a book, how to edit a book, how to market, how to sell. So we do have courses on marketing publicity, even finance, how to do a PNL uh, profit and loss statement for a book, etc. It gives you or it molds you as a, as a professional, any publishing, to get into any publishing field, any publishing vertical. We also study genres like children's publishing, academic publishing, or romance, thriller. So we also do study some of the genre fiction formats like podcasting, audiobooks. We also study some of those formats. One exceptionally um, uh, good thing about this course is that you get to meet um, some of these big publishers uh, within the classroom. So most of my instructors are professionals, especially from the big force. Uh, So you get to meet them in the classroom. And that's how even my first book that I acquired also came from my classroom. The first book that you picked up uh, got shortlisted for International Booker. It is published by Ulysses Press. Please tell us about Ulysses Press. So Ulysses is a small independent press in Brooklyn. And they publish a lot of pop culture, self-help, non-fiction. They all do also have some children's and YA imprint as well. Keith Rieger is the current CEO of Ulysses. So he's also an adjunct professor at NYU. He teaches a course in the publishing program. His family has an endowment with NYU. So they have an internal scholarship. And I got that scholarship last spring. And they offered me an internship with Ulysses at that point. Somewhere last year, so I interned with Ulysses. And when I went there, Keith asked, okay, what do you want to do? I said, I want to start a publishing venture and bring literature from South Asia into in translation to the West or to the global marketplace. So he said, okay, let's get you started. Let's set it up. So he said, what's the first book that you want to acquire? And that's how I said, okay, the details. So the, the details was one of the first books I read or worked when I came here. One of my initial coursework, uh, it was an intro to book publishing um, subject. And my instructor was Tara Parsons from Hapavia. So she had just acquired that book for her publication. So, and we were working on that as part of our coursework. And I really loved that book. At that point, I decided whenever I become a publisher, whenever I acquire a book, this will be my first book. And it so happened that when I acquired, it all came along and I got to acquire this wonderful book. 
and it's being translated. My uh, father has, is translating now. Ulysses is acting as an accelerator uh, for this imprint at this point. When it evolves, it might become a standalone uh, publishing venture or an imprint. Uh, so that's what I'm aiming to do. Uh, so at this point, it's currently under Ulysses. I'm taking some of their resources and uh, working things out. But it's been amazing. He's been mentoring me. And yeah, we acquired another book also very recently. It's also a Swedish book, When the Cranes uh, Fly South by uh, Lisa Risten. I earnestly wish uh, that you become uh, the Fitzcarraldo or the treated axis uh, for South Asia. I'm amazed by some of these independent or small presses. Tilted Axis is one, Fitzgeraldo is another one. They are here for the last probably within 10 years. So in, in 10 years, they have done so much more than even big four have done. And I, I'm trying to take inspiration from um, you know a lot of these small presses um, that have come in the recent years, gone to win all major awards in the last <laughs> uh, five, six years of their operation. So I think uh, it's it's really amazing. You are part of the contingent uh, that is visiting India, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. It's basically an initiative by SALT. What is it about? So SALT is a recent initiative under U Chicago. It's a SALT acronym stands for South Asian Literature and Translation. So this is a body under U Chicago founded by Jason uh, and uh, Danny, Daniel Hahn. Um, both of them are renowned translators. So Danny was my instructor at BCLT, British Center for Literary Translation, summer school. So yeah, so it happened that I met Danny in New York just before BCLT also. He had come here to receive his Ottaway Award at that point. So while we were talking, he mentioned about SALT and what their vision is and what programs they have for publishers and translators, etc., uh, so yeah, they have they they instituted a publisher grant, and they have incredible people in the board from Arunava Sinha to Desi to J.S.G. Kalatil. So this travel grant facilitates publishers from the West to come do a self-directed study in India, or Sri Lanka, or any South Asian countries. So it's just a travel grant where you come scout for books or meet publishers, authors, and do your own groundwork, ground research to know the market and to come back and, let's say, commission sample translations and let, take them to English. So this is the process. So I'm, I applied as I'm trying to work again, work this venture out. So as a part of Ulysses Press, while I'm also taking some of the world literature to Tamil, I'm also, my main motive is to take Tamil literature or South Asian literature to English. I was supposed to visit this December, but things got delayed. So I'll be visiting this May post my graduation. I'm intending to meet publishers, authors, translators in the community, not just in Tamil Nadu, but also in the neighboring states, Kerala, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, and even Karnataka. So I think I'll concentrate in southern India first and Sri Lanka and getting in touch with authors and to know what... I'm more interested in contemporary works. So I'm looking for contemporary works and young writers who are, who are at the forefront of the literary scene now. So what does the program look like? Has it been formalized? All folks who have selected make their own plans and then they'll make their own trips. You make your own plans, you make your own uh, schedules and meetings. So I, I'm even thinking uh, if I get a chance, you know, have a pitch session from translators or publishers and to see if I can uh, get any initial works acquired. I mean, I wanted to uh, come around Chennai Book Fair, uh, but uh, yeah, things got <laughs> delayed. And uh, I think, but also they, it was probably very uh, you know, hectic at that point. Everybody was busy. You're also into translations. I'm translating from Tamil to English. I'm starting with a few, I started with a few short stories. Um, I did, uh, uh, there's a Tamil author, Vijay Ravan, and so I translated his, uh, one of his stories. This was long listed for his Commonwealth Short Story Prize 2020. So I translated that. Uh, it never got published. It's a very long story. So like most uh, publications have their word limit uh, under less than you know 5,000. Okay, Anand. All the very best for your translations, for your publishing career. 
hope to see you in india soon thank you so much for having me and it's a pleasure i've i've heard uh, i followed your podcast for some time now and it's a pleasure being here